right. Thank you both. Thank you. Well, turning to some health news now, a high-tech treatment for obesity just got the okay from the FDA. It's not a pill, but a surgically implanted device to zap the nerves that connect the stomach to the brain so it can trick the brain into thinking that the stomach is full and therefore you don't gain as much weight. Joining us now, Dr. Crystal Lance DeGeorge, an obesity medicine specialist at University Hospital's Case Medical Center. So, doctor, they're calling this a pacemaker for the stomach. What do you think about this? Yeah, Jenna, thank you for having me. You know, I wish I could tell you there was a magic pill or a magic treatment for obesity. Uh, that idea of a quick fix is enticing for all of us. Um, I don't think this device is going to be that holy grail of obesity treatment, yet it's really exciting to see new treatments, new innovations become available for this really difficult disease. So as we mentioned in the intro, what it's supposed to do is, is to make your brain think essentially that, that you're not hungry, that you're full. But if you're overweight, are you really eating because you're hungry or because of something else and if that's the yeah. case how effective can it be yeah so so Jenna that's a great question we know that there's so many things that play into obesity not just feeling hungry emotional cues the fact that we live in a society that actually promotes obesity so this device actually works in several ways by blocking that nerve blocking that pathway between the brain and the stomach you do feel fuller you don't feel your hunger pangs in addition stays in your stomach and your intestine longer, so you feel full. Eating more for, say, emotional reasons is not going to be as pleasurable if there's still food in your stomach. It may make you sick. And then finally, this device may, in fact, reduce levels of a hormone that cause us to feel hungry even when we shouldn't be eating. Mm. So for many different reasons, it could, it could, in fact, yield weight loss. We were showing some animation. It is really cool to see the way that it's implanted, but mm -hmm. one has to wonder, what are the risks involved? Yeah, so I liken this, this device implant to, say, a pacemaker or a cardiac defibrillator where it's a minimally invasive procedure but there's going to be a device in you and in the study the device was implanted for 18 months plus um, what we have seen in the studies that have been done so far is there's a high chance of having mild side effects nausea upset stomach heartburn or pain at the device implantation site I think what people are worried about are severe side effects things that would put them in the hospital keep them in the hospital longer after the procedure that risk is low less than four percent so I'm curious, do you ever remove this device? You mentioned that, that those in the study had it for up to 18 months. Exactly. But is it, is it supposed to remain in your stomach forever, or does it get removed at a certain point? Yeah. So, Jenna, like with any new device, we just don't have enough data to say for sure what the long-term outcomes are going to be and what's going to go on with this device. It has been proven to be safe in the long term, so it could stay. Um, we also know that even after the weight loss phase, one of the hardest things for patients is to maintain their weight loss, and that's where this device actually did pretty well in the study in helping someone sustain their weight loss. So it may be a long-term solution to the problem of regaining weight after you've lost it. I know you have a lot of patients, but I have to ask you just one more question before I let sure. you go, because why not get some free advice, right? It yeah, it's a definitely. new year. There's a lot of people looking to lose a little extra weight. Absolutely. Is there one thing we could start to do today that would be helpful if we're trying to shed a few pounds? Yeah, so we know that diet is what drives weight loss. We should all get active, and exercise is what keeps us at our weight, but diet is what drives weight loss. It can be low-calorie or low-carbohydrate. Modern medicine tells us that low-carbohydrate diets are the most effective most helpful. So I would start researching low carbohydrate diet. That's Jenna. great advice. We appreciate just a little free advice, you know. Why not? Thank you. Why of course. Not? Anytime. Any I appreciate time. it, doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. But I like bread. I know you do, John. But you heard the doctor. All right. That's it. It's over. <laughs> I'll try. Many Americans flock to Florida this time of year for